Uju, Anin, and thank you so much for being patient with us as uh, we try to connect with people all over Turtle Island. Technology is a wonderful thing, you know, when it works. <laughs> Coming up, we have Lamar, and Lamar is going to be uh, discussing traditional games and the ties uh, to the curriculum. So uh, once we uh, establish connections with, with Lamar, we will uh, we'll be up and running once again. We do hope that you're enjoying the uh, we hope you're enjoying today's uh, wonderful lineup of guests. It's uh, it's it's near and dear to my heart. Um, as I say, I was a uh, I went to uh, through the '60s scoop. That's what happened to me. And uh, so all this is uh, not necessarily new to me. Certainly, the language is. Um, so I I'm and I, I learned that everybody's from some sort of a uh, clan. I didn't know what kind of clan I was from. It took me years to figure out that I was from the bedbug clan apparently. So that was, <laughs> that was something. And now that the 60 Scoop money's coming through, if you're part of the 60 Scoop survivor and, and uh, the government is sending you money, I came up with an idea on how I'm going to spend my 60 Scoop money. And that is, uh, I'm going to open up uh, a hot dog cart, a hot dog cart business. I'm going to call it Mustard's oh, Last Stand. In my workshop right now. <laughs> Mustard's Last Stand. Just letting everyone know and that uh, I'm going to sell Bannock then... and Bannock dogs. So that'll be, that'll be what what I'm gonna do but uh yeah I, I went to school and uh, I was taken off the res and put into uh, public school and uh was raised in the uh the white school system so all the kids wanted to play cowboys and Indians of course that's <laughs> I always got to play the part of the Indian that was my traditional game right <laughs> they chased me around the schoolyard playing cowboys and Indian but I didn't mind playing the part of the Indian because I got to keep the casino which was good, but um, cowboys and Indians, cowboys and Indians, that's all we ever played, it seemed. But, uh, but as life went on, of course, I, uh, I wanted to learn more about our people and learn more about uh, what it is like to uh, communicate. I was a big uh, fan of the radio at a very young age. I was fascinated with, I thought there were little people living inside my radio. <laughs> I, I'd listen to it at night and I thought I could hear little people in there singing and I had no concept that was actually broadcasting from somewhere in New York City, but uh, I got to hear that. So, um, so I went into, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I went to college. It took a lot of money to make me sound this white, but they did it, you know. And uh, so I, I got into broadcasting and I got into the entertainment industry. Can you imagine that? And uh, I, I got fascinated with Elvis Presley. He was. Uh, we saw some of the youth here in some of these wonderful videos today. But uh, they would, when they hear music, they dance. It's a natural thing for us to be able to dance and uh, sing. And uh, so I was fascinated with Elvis Presley. And uh, I was like a little tiny Elvis Presley. And uh, they bring me out at parties and flip up my collar and make me sing, you ain't nothing but a res dog, crying all the time. You ain't nothing but a res dog, snagging all the time. And so that's... Uh, that's, that's what influenced me when I was growing up with Elvis. And it wasn't until I, I got to be a little bit older and, and uh, connect with our communities that I realized we love Elvis Presley. I don't know what it is, but our elders love Elvis. And I, maybe it's because Elvis loves gospel music. Maybe it's because Elvis loved his mother and father, had a wonderful family. But then somebody told me that Elvis Presley's great-great-grandmother was Cherokee. Yeah. Her name was Morning Dove, pretty name. <laughs> so I thought, uh, you know, what if Elvis actually was uh, Nietzsche? What if Elvis? What if Elvis actually came from your band? What if he was part of your? Would you vote for Elvis Presley as chief? Would you? <laughs> so I wrote a song. I wrote a song, and it's called "If Elvis Were Chief." And uh, I brought my guitar along today. And uh, <laughs> so uh, here's a quick song. I see Lamar on the camera there. I think he's warming up in the background. So we'll send this song out to Lamar. And it's, all, it's called If Elvis Presley Were Chief. All right, here it goes. Well, it's a one for the money. No, wait a minute, that's a different song. <laughs> here we go. If Elvis were chief, we'd have no beef with the Department of Indian Affairs. He'd shake his hips and curl his lip and comb his jet black hair. 
Hound dogs, res dogs, big teddy bears. If Elvis were chief, he'd be everywhere. He'd ride around the res in his pink Cadillac, building new houses, always giving back. Gospel jams every single night. His Vegas band would make it sound right. If Elvis were chief, there'd be no grief with the trees, rights, or oil. The government would listen because everybody's loving the king of rock and roll. Elvis calling bingo every Friday night. Powwows and treaty days would really be a sight. Band meetings would be a sold out show. Progress on the res would be go, go, go. If Elvis were chief, that would really be the best. He'd really rock the power with his new headdress. The kids on the res would teach him how to rap. He'd show them all karate. I think they'd like that. If Elvis were chief, we'd have no beef with the Department of Indian Affairs. He'd shake his hips, curl his lip, and comb his jet black hair. Hound dogs, res dogs, big teddy bears. If Elvis were chief, he'd be everywhere. If Elvis were chief, he'd be everywhere. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. That's Elvis, and he's been a big part of my... Uh, my life, as I mentioned, I don't know if he's been a big part of a Lamar's life. Lamar looks like he might be a uh, Eddie Rabbit fan. I don't know. Hello, Lamar. Can you hear us now? Look at Lamar. Hey, I see Lamar, and Lamar's uh, respecting our uh, that beautiful orange oh, shirt. Thank you all. I hear you, Lamar. Um, there you are. Look how handsome you are. Thank you all. Lamar looks as a Gillian and the cigars win. Um, Nicole Chinu, Chin, I go, um, Ninaraskop now, uh, Kakio, Wagu Makantek, a Petuti Ekuta. So, uh, my name is Lamar Sasagiwian. I'm originally from Sweetgrass, uh, First Nation. Um, I'd like to thank you all for, for being here. Um, <clears throat> I'm having some uh, audio problems right now. So, um, um, I was told you can hear me, but I can't hear you guys. So, um, I'm, I'm going to begin here and I'm going to uh, be talking a little fast, so I apologize for this. I'm going to, uh, um, what, what I do is uh, I teach about uh, traditional games and how they're used in the classroom. And um, as, as I've been a teacher for since, uh, since the last millennium, and I've, I've learned this as, uh, as a teacher. Um, that we have a curriculum and the curriculum is basically a what and as educators we provide the how like how are we going to uh, show the what which is the curriculum and in my experience um i've noticed that we have a lot we get more success when uh it's not only hands-on um instruction but also that there's a connection uh, yeah, for, for math for example um, uh, the, the students want to know what's what's the connection in, with the math as opposed to why mark needs 14 watermelons from a store uh, in our in our culture uh, um, we don't have a word for math it's just uh, just like that. We, we don't have a word for religion. It's just um, it's just the way things it's just the way things are done and how we how we do it. We have um, you know, we're more of a visual people. We need to see it, and our math is basically all uh, mental mental math. Like for example, if you have a family of five and you kill a bull moose, how long is it going to last you? Okay, math. Um, we use our um, uh, we use our we use our body as the unit of measurement. Like for example, when it comes to um, when it comes to um, a game like this, where we're we're doing target games, um, in in order to hit this target, you have to stand like a certain distance from the target, and. The, and you're trying to, they're trying to hit the hit the target with a with a feather, a dart. And instead of drawing a line on there to try and hit hit this target there, 
uh, what we do is we have the, the, the hunters carrying these taking two walking strides away. Two walking strides is your body height. So it, it levels the playing field when you're playing against, uh, when they have different heights. So this, um, this, is a, this is a hunting game. It's a hunting game. It works on eye-hand coordination. Um, and uh, this is kind of like the beginning. If you can hit this, if you can hit this uh, from two steps away uh, with both hands, you'll be able to hit it. Um, then you take a step back, three steps, and then you try and hit it. Then four and five. We don't usually go past five because um, uh, teepees don't get bigger. So, and if you can hit it from across the teepee, now try hit it. See? Now it's a uh, moving target. And you can see that, um, that, that the progression. And if you can do that, then you then you graduate to these, these here. I call these little guys rabbits. We roll these along the ground and we, and we spear it. We try it. And during a Sundance, uh, when we were younger, we're, um, we're too young to go in the, in the big lodge. So we had these and we roll these along the ground. Well, and then as, as it goes by, then we try and shoot it, either with bow and arrows or, or throwing spears. So we develop our um, hunting skills using, using these. Um, when it comes to the curriculum there, um, uh, numeracy, like um, there was a comment made by the ministry um, 2007 that they said that in um, indigenous kids don't do well in math because uh, math didn't arrive until the European um, until the Europeans brought it and then we were looking at them going yeah we had math <laughs> like I said we didn't call it math it was just the way things were done and we did teach however like uh, mathematical concepts and mathematical concepts are universal like uh, two plus two is four in any language or any culture. What we, what we use are these. And I, I would strongly suggest that you guys go harvest these with the students uh, you, using tobacco, put it down. So when they harvest these, they can, they're, they're more likely to take care of these. Um, here, uh, 20 uh, in, in math. In math, we're a base 10 math. You can see 10. Now, Inuit, they have a, they're a base 20 because they, they put their feet in the air and see 20. But here, um, uh, base 10 math here, um, what we do here is that um, whoever wins the, these three will be the winner. And how do, how do, you, how do you win? Because I, I would be hiding one person here, right here, right here, and one person right here. So there's me, the hider and this person and this person. So it's a, a, a three people game. And as the hider, I'll take these uh, 20, hide them and then I'll bring them out. And this, this person here will guess the number on this stick. And this person here will guess the number in this hand. The number that I hear first, that's the one we count. And then we, we count them and we count them all together, three, four, five, six seven eight ten eleven if that person guessed right this person at eleven and then they get it right they get one if that person uh this person gets another one right they get this one and if this person gets this one right they get this one and what happens now is if if this person wins the next one they'll just grab the other person's marker and whoever wins all three they become the person to, to do the hiding. So that's how, that's how we rotate them. And this is really good for primary grades, really good. And when you're, when you're asked, when you, when you count how many, you say, this is 11, always ask how many left. Always ask that, all right? So you focus on subtraction as well. Uh, another thing here is of 20, I, I, I take away one. Now we're left with 19, which is an odd number. And then we mix them around and make sure you make sure you do this. And then you mix them around. 
So, and so they're so they're not counting. Make sure they're not counting. So just move them around. Like that. And then you, they'll they'll point which one they think is an even number. Um, the point is um, is like, um, and then when, once you guess, then then you count them by twos to see because one of these is going to be an even number. One is going to be an odd number. And something else you can do with these is there's a there's a rubber band right there. I use a rubber band. It's easier. Uh, I'll explain why. And what you do is you 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 mix them around, mix them around like this. There you go. One of these sticks has the rubber band, so then people would select them one by one until they get the rubber band, right? And uh, the, the 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 point is you don't want this one. You don't want to get this one. And when when you're playing this one. This game, I strongly suggest you use um, uh, use whatever Jedi mind trick. Uh, you know what I mean. So if they're gonna pick one, you go, hey, don't pick that one there. Oh, you should try and definitely pick this one. Yeah, mess with their heads. It's good. It's a good, healthy fun. Uh, the point why a rubber band. Um, back in the day, they used to just mark it, just like a like a like, like a knife mark. But um, this one here, I use a rubber band because after the second round, no matter what, they, they're going to know which one. They're going to know which one. So to level the playing field, take this one off and put it onto a different, a different stick. And you want to up, want to make it even a challenge, more challenging. Put more sticks. Okay? See who can get a perfect score. And uh, speaking of this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the, the hardest game that I know. And I, yeah. it's, uh, it's probably something you all played, um, different, uh, maybe different versions of, but the kids really, kids really, really like this. And that is pick up sticks. So in there, you can see I have to rescue the, the one stick, I usually want the rubber band. So I'll take, I'll take another stick and I'll start moving other sticks out of the way and nothing else can move. If anything else moves, then I'm out. And um, it, it's hard for me because my hands shake. Um, I, I blame coffee, but I'm not quitting coffee. And um, when, you watch, when you watch the kids play this, you're gonna see how brutal they get. <laughs> once they drop, once the sticks are dropped, they're just really staring. Yeah, you that one moved, and uh, it's, it's, so start with a few, let them have some success, and they have more success. Uh, really lay it on them by adding more. Again, again with the willows. You know, try uh, hand-eye coordination. How many? How many? How many can you do? Watch this, check this out. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Um, another one, <clears throat> another one that I use, um, besides if you didn't have, um, it's, if you don't have willows, for example, you, you can use small stones. Okay? And what you would do is you, you would roll these stones out and they would have to guess the number of stones correctly before they stop moving. And it's very important that it, they have to say the number before it stops moving. Uh, that would prevent them from counting because you should be able to like see a number. And for those uh, in primary grades there, um, once you have your, once they have your, your, your list there, uh, the, the rocks that they guess, if they say five, you can, you can just ask them questions. Do you think that's five without counting? then they can say yes or no. Do you think it's less or more? And then also from here, you can also have them group them into twos. And if there's a leftover, like that one there, you know this is gonna be odd number. So uh, you can practice uh, for uh, the skip counting for, for assessment, which works. 
another one uh, I'm going to do um, share screen here and just looking at the bottom where to go here. Okay. And there we go. It's here. Here we go. Um, there's traditional games here, and I'm going to go uh, through these um, really quickly. I'm sorry. But uh, the topics that uh, in here are patterns, estimation, probability, subtraction, division, skip counting, which I already showed you. Um, uh, patterning, uh, use uh, cat's cradles. Um, and with this one here, it's not only eye hand coordination, it's not only looking for patterns, it's also a good way of uh, developing a rapport with students. Remember my, my late Nukum, uh, she and I used to play uh, the cat's cradle. But while we were playing, that's when she started uh, talking to me. And since my hands were busy, you know, my ears perked up. Okay? So I remember a lot of things. So it's a good way of developing a one-on-one -on -one rapport mm -hmm. with a student. Um, this is the, 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 the guessing one, the, the counting. And you can see the other one is, um, the, the other one is the pick up sticks there. So this one on the, on the left, uh, are uh, deer antlers. Um, you know, get a deer antler and, uh, and slice them really thick, like uh, for tennis bologna, <laughs> just nice and thick. And uh, those three, um, what, what do you see there on the left? There's three um, that, are, that are dark and then there's a moon and a star. Those are important. And then there's a scoring system to it. And what I do is I have them in groups of uh, four or five, and they play this game. Um, the score is either zero, one, or two. And they'll play this game for about five minutes. And after about five minutes there, you can um, you can have them come back to their desks or, um, and you have them um, take that information, uh, take everybody's scores and represent it. So I use this at the beginning of uh, graphing in math. The, the stones here on the right, um, right there, if you can see them, uh, this is actually a board game. Yeah, yeah, we invented board games. So uh, these these ones, the, the rocks there, are um, uh, you you pick any starting point. You have a little marker that you, that you create, and you you throw uh, three dice, and usually like that that's kind of like a coin. That one has to be, it's going to land on one side or the other. So like a heads or tails. I use the antlers um, that you see there on the left. And then what you do is you have to, you, you start from one stone and you have to, go, have to go all the way around until you land on the stone that you started with. That's how you win. And everyone else has their own starting stone to, to begin with. But if you, and, but if you land on someone, um, uh, someone's um, someone's marker. That person has to go all the way back to the beginning. It's similar to that game. I think they call it Trouble or Sorry. So, so we we invented that game. Just, just didn't put a patent on it. So uh, there's the the guessing game again, and there's that there's that uh, board game I was telling you about. So everyone has their own little markers. They're on the outside. Uh, again, these are uh, the, the the guessing sticks. Uh, um, working on estimation, uh, probability, and there's the dice game, and there's the scoring system to it at the bottom on the on the right. It's either zero, one, or two. Um, and by the way, when you're putting those stones in a circle, make sure they're in, in multiples of four. So a good number to start is about sixteen. That's a good number to start with. Um, the reason being, uh, it's just a little subtle reminder of uh, the significance of uh, the number four in our culture. So, um, so let you know. Oh, the game on the right. Um, that's one of our more popular games out here. It's called a double ball. So uh, here's the them playing double ball here. Um, the double ball there. Um, 
I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you guys three guesses what part of the buffalo. You probably only need one. But, uh, you only need one guess, but there's two of them. So, so and you can see on, um, it's played similar to the cross. Uh, the, the goals there are, um, um, they have to wrap around a crossbar. That's how you score. And then they keep, they keep playing until uh, someone scores. And there's no out of bounds, so it's just it's an open field. Um, the, these images uh, were actually taken yesterday. I was at Sturgeon Lake uh, Cultural Camp, so I just snapped these uh, yesterday afternoon. I uh, had to had the kids playing, uh, and see there you can see the the, the goal. Uh, the other one is um, uh, the target games. Um, see there's the the buffalo. Um, uh, the feather feather dart game and the one on the right is the, the rolling hoop that we played at Sundances when we were kids so I rolled a hoop there and they, they try and spear it see outside uh, works for all ages it's harder than it looks I've done this presentation uh, in person by the way uh, more than 100 times and of those 100 times four that's how many people hit the target out of, I, I say, honestly, I was actually trying to count there. There was about 150 presentations I've made in the past 15 years. I've only seen it four times the target been hit. So, and of course, um, um, the one on the right, the uh, knife games. That's awesome. Um, I'm, I don't, um, I have a section on uh, knife games that we play because during, again, during the Sundance, we, we played with, uh, we had, we had knife games, and I'm pretty sure you guys know of some knife games. And I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying we should start playing with knives, but we should have knife games. So uh, archery as well. Um, that, that's um, the one on the left is uh, spear. They call it nickname is spear the whale, but it's uh, I call it spear the rabbit, and of course the the uh, javelin throw. Uh, there's the knife games there. Uh, they're playing stretch. Some of you might remember that one there. And you th throw the knife into the ground and they have to touch it with their foot. Um, yeah, they're playing double ball. Oh, the one on the um, left, what I'm holding, that's a rabbit skull. And, uh, we have a game uh, growing up called Wapos, Wapos, Wapos. And what you do is you take that, we'd all sit in a circle, you take the Wapo skull and you spin it around and then you ask Wapo something. Like we'd, but we'd use our language, we'd say, um, uh, Wapos, Wapos, um, I want my guy who eats exit, like <laughs> who smells funny. And then you, you spin it there and then the rabbit will point out the smelly one. So, but uh, um, this one here, um, this game has, um, it, it's not directly, but it's um, there is a Supreme Court case called Delgamuk, which our in which the Supreme Court says that our oral tradition is considered valid testimony. So this game actually validates that. Um, the rock on the uh, left, I found out when I was uh, harvesting rocks in Bright Creek, uh, Alberta, in the foothills. That's called a, a horned coral. That fossil that's in that rock. It's between 250 to 450 million years old. So, uh, there's the board game again. And uh, uh, yes, that sticker does say save res dogs. So yeah, res dogs. Um, again, more target games, um, uh, games of strength. Uh, this is called, uh, um, instead of tug of war, it's uh, pole pushing. It's actually, it's more fun on the ice. And then there's a score on the double ball. And on the right, it's uh, what we call Chitsa one uh, tops. And when we were older, we used the whips. We played that on the ice as well. So the, back in the day, um, they were games were used to acquire skills to survive. Now it's for our culture to survive. So um, stop sharing. And I'm going to do. One more thing here. Here's the. Uh, so, 
That's uh that was the um that that, that was double ball we playing that in Ontario. So um uh I'm talking talking really really fast here because there's quite 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 a bit out there, quite a bit of um information. Um the this feather game, the one I showed you at the beginning, in science, for example. Um, I, I use this at the start of uh, Principles of Flight. So I'm not sure if the Ontario curriculum has that particular unit in science. And um, the atlatl, I use that for um, when, when in science, according to Western science, uh, energy transforms from one form to another. And I use the atlatls um, to demonstrate potential energy switching to kinetic energy and on impact, there's actually a, a little temperature change. So it turns into thermal energy. So then that's using atlatls. So it's not that we want to fit into the curriculum. It's just actually, um, how does the curriculum fit into us? And that's how, we, that's how we've been looking at this. Um, there are, um, one second. Before I get a bit of water, uh, maybe in there, oh, in the meeting here. We're just finishing some concrete there. Okay, yeah. thanks. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, no. so uh -huh. anyways, um, somebody asked me before, like, how many games do I know? Um, I stopped counting at 100. So, and there's 100 more out there. And um, I'm going out to uh, I'll be at uh, Delaware Nation on July 22nd. I'll be um, heading out uh, in La Palma, Manitoba, uh, beginning middle of July. So I've been out in Ontario, uh, Timmins, uh, Timagami. I've been out there, uh, Oneida. So presenting on, on games like this because I want people to uh, uh, bring these games back. Um, one, one more thing, um, these here, we, we call these game pieces. And the, the place that has the most game pieces, like these tops here, is the Vatican. They have over 244,000 of, uh, of our pieces. How do we know that? They, they told us. <laughs> so we told them, you know, we'll bring them back. But they only gave us a few back. And they're keeping the rest for... But there, are, there, are, there are games in, in 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 the curriculum that that, that focus on um, numeracy, um, numeracy skills. Uh, some some games are there. Uh, are game games of chance. For example, this one. These are uh, uh, caribou knuckle bones. And there's a scoring system to this, this one here. So this top one here is a hundred there. I've never gotten that one yet. So I'm still trying, still trying. And what you do is uh, you, 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 see, the pendulum swing it, but that's only one point. That's the one I want. So there are, there are literally hundreds of games out there in, in your area as well. Um, go find out, um, start that conversation as to what games that do you, do you remember playing? What games do you know? What games have you heard of? So um, I want to, um, not exactly sure how much time we have left here. Can, can somebody type? <laughs> um, are you waving or is that five? Four. He's a four. <laughs> you know, like this. So um, there's a. I want to, to share something else here too. Uh, share screen. Like I said, there, there are hundreds of games out there. 
And when we're, uh, this one, for example, um, the, the tops I was showing you, uh, this one here, I got this one from, from uh, Brazil. Now, when I, I was down in Brazil for the World Indigenous Peoples Games in 2015. So uh, we have our version of, of, uh, of tops here, of tops here. And this is the um, Indigenous Brazilian version. So, and I've, um, I've done uh, this uh, presentation also in New Zealand. And there, and they, 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 they shared games with me as well. They told me, wherever you go, um, share, share this one. So this is from New Zealand. And I had my, I had one of my students kind of recreate it. But then he, he put his own indigenous flair into it. So um, I usually I usually start the presentations with with this one. This is actually a, a good fun uh, icebreaker. And so um, I was wondering if um, uh, if any if you had any questions, could you just like you, you can type uh, type really fast. Can you hear me the, yet, Lamar? Um, the the stone the stone game digging, digging through my stuff here uh the, the stone game there these ones here uh, the, the, these ones here uh my uh, my uh um Word of advice there would be to ask uh, the elders in your community if you're allowed to uh, write on stones. So um, be, be cautious about that one. Um, when will I be uh, presenting at Timmins? I presented there before. It's called the Wabun Gathering. Um, that's I was in 2018. So um, where does the funding come from from such traditional teachings? Um, uh, um, I don't. I don't have an answer for that. I, I don't know um, because everything here I'm um, basically made, and um, they've been shared with me. There's something called the International Traditional Game Society, which I'm part of. It's based out of, um, I think it's Great Falls, Montana. Go on to traditionalnativegames.org. Uh, um, do you share a curriculum? Um, yeah, I, I do. I've done workshops with uh, well, with professionals. Um, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a teacher as well. And and for example, I use this one like uh, like the dice games, and I talk about. Um, the, the teacher guide and the outcomes. Outcomes. So, so yeah, so I, I do uh, work with teachers there as to the, the exact uh, outcomes that we have in Saskatchewan. I think they're a little different there in Ontario. Um, just reading the questions here. Um, oh, the string pattern game with your mom, yeah. Um, uh, people know about the the, um, the the cat's cradle, but like like I said, when's the last time you played it, and what's stopping us? Like, honest, what what is actually stopping us from bringing these games back? Because a lot of these games went underground because of residential schools. Um, so as soon as they got the residential schools, things like this were were taken away. So I remember my dad saying they used to after lights out. They, they make little tops out of uh, the wooden spools. They put a nail through it and use a shoelace and spin. So the games went underground. And uh, now that those that era is past, it's time to, to bring these bring them back. And I'm not talking to the Squad of Vatican go we'll, we'll raid, raid the place. I'm talking about we 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 made them here, we'll just make more. And I believe that the games are not lost, they're simply dormant. They're like sleeping like their language. Um, so, um, yeah, like, 
month. He's going like this there. And he, yeah, what's going on? He's saying, so um, I, uh, I've been talking fast and I apologize for that. And this is being recorded anyways. So I'll just play, won't play back. I want to thank you. Um, and I hope you learned uh, something from this. Even if it was just the one thing, uh, I'll, I'll take it as a good thing. And I want to thank the, um, the, the NAN, the NAN people for uh, allowing me to share this and they have my contact information. If you need to contact me for um, like any, like for the clarifications or um, some, uh, um, some like written uh, explanations for some of the games, just by all means, just uh, let me know. So um, Jerry, take it back. Back to you. Big Rich. How about a nice round of applause for Lamar, everybody. There's Lamar. Yay. <laughs> All right. That was awesome. And I've, again, I've learned so much here. And uh, we're going to be uh, moving along to our closing ceremonies in just a minute. But of course, uh, speaking of traditional games, it's time once again to play our play to win word code. And there it is at the bottom of the screen. This word is enjoyment. Write that word down. Enjoyment. Remember it. The word is enjoyment, and that is our play to win code word for this session. And uh, we're going to collect all those words and we're going to put them in uh, into the prize draw. And who knows, it could be you that uh, that wins. So that's Lamar. And I think we're going to move over to our uh, closing ceremonies for this day. We have another session tomorrow. So we will see you over at the closing ceremonies moments from now. Miigwech.